Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and today our lesson is God Offers Deliverance. God Offers Deliverance. Before we begin, let's start off with the word of prayer. Our most precious, loving, and heavenly Father, we invite you into our hearts and our minds and our souls on this day, Lord. We're asking you, Father, to relieve us of those things that have a tendency to cloud our minds, Father. They keep us from hearing your word, even the bird making all the noise, Lord. We praise thee, Father, and we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit, Father. And we ask for your wisdom, Lord, your clarity, and your guidance. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank thee. Amen, amen, and amen. God offers deliverance. As always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss any of them. I'm going to start this morning by reading the uh, the end focus. It's an interesting one, and it's about deliverance, believe it or not. <laughs> and the end focus reads as follows. Kalen had been incarcerated for a crime he did not commit. He believed the day would come when God would clear his name and he would be delivered from his bondage. He had held close to the words found in Isaiah. The sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. He trusted God. He had gotten into some situations in the past being accused falsely and misjudged, and God delivered him out every time. But this time, the setup led to his imprisonment. His friends and associates felt sorry for him, but they didn't believe Caelan would get out of this one easily, and they told him to plead guilty and he would get a lesser charge. Caelan stood his ground. He said, how can I confess to what I have not done? God has never failed me, and neither will he this time. Caelan was given the maximum sentence of 20 years without a chance of parole. That was two years ago. Today, he was preparing to leave prison. All charges had been dropped. He was exonerated, and he was singing and praising God. Paul and Silas's jail experience came to mind. After their release, they told the brethren all about it. Galen could hardly wait to meet up with his former friends and associates to share with them how God delivered him out of prison. Today's question says, when we are in a jam and things don't look good, do we still keep the faith? Hmm. When we are in a jam and things don't look good, do we still keep the faith? Do we still believe and hope in God to deliver us? Hmm, those are some questions for you. Today we are in the book of Isaiah. We're in chapter 51. We're going to start at verse 1 and we're going down to verse 8. And of course, I'm reading the, uh, the New Living Translation. Again, Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 8. Verse 1. Listen to me, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord. Consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry for which you were mined <laughs> that's that's an awesome awesome little verse i know y'all y'all hear me say that all the time everything in the bible is awesome to me i'm i'm sorry i get a little excited when i start talking about the word but consider the rock from which you were cut this is saying that you were cut from the same thing that god cut jesus from Did you get that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. The word says that. That's not me saying that. So we were all cut from the same stone. We're all cut from the same spirit. It... <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to try not to get too deep into this one. But, but consider that. When you start thinking that everything around you is failing and you, you're losing and these battles are becoming too too great for you to bear or you just can't handle it anymore. Consider the rock from which you were cut. The rock. The quarry from which you were cut. Consider the stock that you're made of. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, let me squint. Verse 2. <laughs> yes, 
Think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave you birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. Mm. Consider the rock from which you will come from, cut from. Consider the quarry where you came from. Abraham was considered to be the, the, the father, the, the, the beginning of this great nation that God was building. I still believe that God is still building that nation today. So you consider where you came from. And I know everybody's going to say, well, I came from my parents. No, 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 no. You're more than that. I come from New York. No, 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 no. You're more than that. I come from a great background, from a great family. No, 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 no. You're even more than that. You are more than the sum of the things which are earthly that put you here on this earth. You are a living, breathing, walking, talking miracle. <laughs> you hear that? Living, breathing, walking, talking miracle because you were cut from the same stone in the same quarry that God cut Jesus from to put him here on this earth to die for our sins. Mm. Verse 3. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. <laughs> Galen, Galen was singing and filling the air with songs of thanksgiving when he got out of prison. Thinking he was going to be there for 20 years, Galen knew better because God had delivered him once before. So here he comes again to continue that, that, that same string of deliverance. He was going to be delivered again. And this little bird is making a lot of noise. <laughs> Mm. Verse 4, listen to me, my people, hear me, Israel, for my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nations. It doesn't matter what man does. You know, my, my wife is always saying the same thing. She says, uh, man promotes, but God elevates. I think I got that right. She probably gonna tell me I got it wrong. <laughs> But, but 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 God decides who moves forward. God decides who's delivered. God decides these things, regardless of what man wants to do in his own little raggedy mind, because none of us are, are, are perfect. There's not one of us who's perfect. We all have biases. We all have these things that 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 we look at and we think that we're right in our own minds. But that's just it. We're just in our own minds. We're not in the mind of God. But God is in our minds. And if we listen to him, he can remove those biases. He can remove those doubts. He can change everything about us. Mm. Where am I at? Verse 5. My mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All distant lands will look to me and will wait in hope for my powerful arm. Mm -hmm. All distance lands, all distant lands will look to me and wait in hope for my powerful arm. If God proclaims something, which he does in his word, then there's nothing that can, <laughs> there's nothing that can hold us down. There's nothing that can stop us. Regardless of what man does, regardless of what he says, regardless of where he thinks he stands, God is always going to be in, in, in control and in charge. Hmm. Verse 6. Look up to the skies above and gaze down on the earth below. For the skies will disappear like smoke and the earth will wear out like a piece of clothing. The people of the earth will die like flies, but my salvation lasts forever. My righteous rule will never end. Now, I like to say that God is boasting when it comes to that part. But there's a little bit of truth to that. But he's not boasting for his own benefit. He's boasting for our benefit. 
He's saying that when the end comes, he is going to be in complete control and he will rule. There's, again, another one of these things where man thinks that he has something right and man doesn't have the slightest clue as to what God intends. When God returns, he's going to make the sky disappear like a puff of smoke. And every eye will see him. Every knee will bow. Everyone will glorify him where they are. Mm. Because his righteous rule will never end. Verse 7. Listen to me, you who know right from wrong. You who cherish my law in your hearts. Do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. Ain't nothing they can do. <laughs> Get that? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm starting to get surrounded by animals and creatures. Got a bunny rabbit showing up. <laughs> but, but, but God's rule is never going to end. There's nothing that we can do to stop that. He's already ruling. We just need to, 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 to realize that and accept it and let him rule. That way we won't have anything wrong. Things won't go wrong. But we have to step aside and let him take control. Mm. Listen to me, those who know right from wrong. You who cherish my law in your hearts. Do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. Because there's nothing they can do. They run their mouths, that's about it. But they can't do anything about your eternal soul. They can't control it. They can't stop it. They can't hurt, harm, or even touch it. Mm. Verse 8. For the moth will devour them as it devours clothing. The worm will eat at them as it eats wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation will continue from generation to generation. There are things that God has for us. There are salvations there are protections there are gifts of unfailing love that he has for us he won't forget us he won't turn his back on us just like so just like the young man who knew that god would come and save him he's going to come and save you too from whatever you're going through Whatever might be ailing you, no matter what it is, God is in control, not us. How minds can't even comprehend what he does for us. All we have to do is hold on to him. Hold on to the gifts that he has for us. Because what we're going to receive will blow your mind. God is in control and he's going to remain in control always. Let us pray. Our most precious, loving, and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together to study on this day, Father. We're also thanking you this morning, Father, that you will always have the last word, that your salvation is true and pure, that you never turn your back on us, that you never forget who or what we are, that you love us, Lord, in spite of ourselves. We thank you, Lord, and right now, we place every care at your feet. We place the times that we've toiled, Father, the times that we've worried, and the times that we've gone through strife, Father. We place them at your feet, Lord. And we're asking you, Father, to watch over us, to bless us, to keep us. Now, we thank you for your word on this day, Lord. And we thank you for the time that you allow us to come together just to study your word. We love you, Lord. And we thank you ever so much for always loving on us. Now may you bless us all. And may you give us all your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And as always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss any of them. Uh, watch today's sermon today. I, I know it's going to be a good one because I'm already filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. God keep you. And I pray also that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Bye-bye.